I want to show you something. This is a camera that I had as a teenager. It's called the Zenith E. It weighed an absolute ton. It's Russian made, but what a fabulous camera. You see that on the front of it? Well, that is the light meter, okay? And the way it worked was really, really clever. Let me show you. You see that, you see that circle there? Well, underneath in that, in that dial there is a needle. Can you see that needle moving? I'm using a torch on the light meter at the front and you can see the needle moving. If I get closer to it, see how it goes up? Well, what you would do is first off, you would set your ISO and you do that with this dial. So, you see over there, I would move that let's say we want it at 400 ISO so you'd set that you'd set your shutter speed so let's set that over 500th of a second and you'd point the camera at the subject and wherever that needle landed you would operate this outer ring and you would actually move see that circle moving and you would move that circle over the needle so you can see that that's it and you'd move it over the needle and then you knew he was perfectly exposed at that shutter speed at that ISO to take the shot I mean, how simple was that? But it was so effective, I used to get some fabulous pictures out of this. And then what they did, because technology moves on, they bought out something called the Zenith TTL. And if you notice, it's now not got a light meter there because the TTL stood for through the lens metering. So now the light, the reflective light would go through the lens into the camera and then technology took over and it was then semi-automatic. And this was then obviously the future of the cameras because now we go for a digital DSLR with it all built in, all through the lens. It retakes a reading through the lens, but you've got different metering modes now. So that's technology and that's how it comes on. But these are fabulous cameras. But I just wanted to show you that because that's basically how to get a great exposure with one of these cameras and how things have progressed. Hi, today in this video, I'm going to explain to you metering modes and I'm also going to explain to you about autofocus. The photograph is made right here in the eye. The, eye is, the, the photograph is in the eye, not in the camera. It, it, it's a tool, it's a light trap. You know, it, it traps a millisecond of light. Um, but it, if you know what to do, you can, you can bring yourself around to where you're, you're taking some pictures. To start with, metering modes. So, what is a light meter for? Your light source is called the incident light which comes from the source, from the sun, and then it's reflected back into the camera. And we've got to get the reading of the reflected light from that camera in order to expose it correctly. Now on a camera, there are a few metering modes. With wildlife photography, and obviously that's what I'm always talking about, I always use evaluative metering mode. On other cameras, it's called matrix metering mode. And what that does, that takes a reading of the whole scene, 
So in previous videos, I've spoken about how the camera meters from the whole scene, okay? So the reason why in wildlife photography, we use evaluative metering is because we're outside and there is so many different light sources. So you get a reflection back from the sky, from the trees, from the subject, from the ground. So we've got to take an overall look at what the light is so that the meter can then decide which is gonna be an average. And like I've said before, sometimes we, it's that complicated that the light source is that complicated that we have to override the camera with exposure compensation, which we've already gone through and hopefully this will make it even more clearer. So there are a few modes within your camera for metering. You've got spot metering, you've got center weighted metering, you've got partial metering. Now all those, they have got their uses, but mainly with wildlife photography, it's the evaluative or the matrix metering mode that we need to be concentrated on. Later on, you can learn about spot metering and spot metering that can be good for metering a subject for when it's backlit but that is another technique that you need to be looking at in later series so for now we're going to look at just using the evaluative metering mode and that way you'll be able to get more control over your camera more control over lighting because all wildlife photography is about exposure and it's exposure of the reflected light that we're interested in this is the symbol on your camera this is the setting that you need to be on to make sure you're on evaluative metering mode or matrix so this is what you're looking for switch your camera to this mode and you don't have to worry about it again for a long time and it's as simple as that. So take another look at my previous videos about exposure compensation and you'll see that they come together and it, they work beautifully together. You're controlling it and the reason why you're controlling it is because wildlife photography is all outside and it can be sunny, it can be overcast, it can be dark, it can be raining, it can be foggy, it can be all sorts. So you need to take control this allows you to take control and that's what we need to be able to produce fabulous images as i showed you before that clip on the zenith uh, camera and the second zenith camera was a ttl you know through the lens metering well all the metering is done through the lens of your digital camera and that's where you get the settings from now there's another thing that goes through your lens and that is autofocus. Now, the way that autofocus works, if I explain that first, is as we've got eyes, we've got two eyes. And what will happen is we will look at a subject and where that subject lands, that is where our eyes will go to at like a cross point there. So they will cross there. So what will happen is then, our brain will calculate the distance from here to the subject and then it will alter the lens on our eyes whether or not it's in focus so it'll calculate the distance from here to the subject alter the lenses on our eyes and that's exactly how we focus on a subject so the brain is working all that out and what the camera does on autofocus is exactly the same it actually reads the reflected light into the camera and in the camera it has a mirror that it puts all the reflective light down onto a strip of a sensor and this sensor reads two different subjects and what it will do is it'll line those subjects up as soon as it's as soon as it's as soon as it's, as soon as it's lined up 
that's then in focus and that's how autofocus works on a camera so it's all what's done inside the camera from the reflected light and what it's reading to be able to marry those subjects together as soon as it's married together and you'll see it in the camera as it goes and all of a sudden it'll be in focus, and, focus and that's what's actually happening so the autofocus is something that we're going to use a lot because it's quicker it's easier than doing manual focus and as soon as you've got that focus plane that we spoke about before you've got your subject and you focus on that on that subject that's the focus plane we've now gone into autofocus so the lens is our eyes and the camera internals are is our brain so whatever light comes in there the brain inside of the camera works it out and does autofocus. The moment the technology is fantastic how it does it, yeah. So you're going to use that. The way that you're going to use the autofocus is by simply pressing the shutter button halfway down. That activates the autofocus, and the autofocus components then send a message to the lens. The lens has a motor inside it, of which then that automatically turns the focus ring into where you need to be focused so you're pushing the button halfway down and that'll focus it in your camera you have three focusing modes so you have continuous focusing you have single focusing or you have manual focusing now we're going to concentrate on continuous focusing continuous focusing is something that we use in wildlife photography because when you hold the button down halfway wherever that subject moves to your focus will stay in focus it'll keep tracking that animal that bird so that's continuous focus now in on a canon camera that's called ai servo artificial intelligence servo and in other cameras that is called afc so this is continuous focusing. So you imagine you've got a bird coming towards you, okay, and you need to keep refocusing, or well, the camera will do that for you in, in continuous focus. Another one is single focus, which is completely useless for something that is moving. So with, with single focus, that is something like if you were doing portraits, okay, you block on the... Uh, on the person's face you tell them not to move and bang 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 you go there so you've got manual focus as well which is on the manual focus ring and i have spoken about that in a previous video video where it was very very useful to automatically just, just all of a sudden get hold of the focus ring and bring it into focus on a lens you'll have a minimum focusing point and that is where if you like the two images are coming into the camera and if it's too close, then you're not getting enough separation for the camera inside, the internal, to line those two up. So that's why it has a minimum uh, focusing distance. But when you're doing it uh, manually, it doesn't really have that minimum. You can bring it right in. So when focusing on a bird or animal, the best part, the only part to focus on is always, always its eye. Now to be able to pinpoint the focus onto a, a subject's eye, then what you need to do is you need to use a focus point. When you look through the camera, you will see uh, various amounts of focus points, and they look like this. Now, I, 99% of the time, use a single focus point in the middle of the screen. I then point that single focus at the animal's eye and if you look, you can see there's one that's lit up and the other ones aren't. But you can still see the other ones. And with the joystick on the camera, you can move that point across, up and down, and have that on its eye. So you're actually recomposing the shot, but you can make sure that that is on its eye. Now, focusing points are, again, a different subject. So we'll cover that in a different video. But in the meantime, concentrate 
of the single focus point in the center and keep using that practice 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 with birds in flight practice with animals getting that point over their eye once you've mastered that you can then start looking at doing groups and different things but at the moment concentrate on that and you'll get some lovely results Thank you.